welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new WWE fantasy booking video. And my God, do I enjoy these, man. I love these videos. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I like to creatively book things and write things and everything like that. And it's just super fun time, man. I mean, it is WrestleMania season. WrestleMania coming up this weekend. Who's hyped for? We got a two-night event just like last year. Hopefully, next year, we'll have it all together under one roof or, or stadium. And we'll have a maxed out crowd. I know we're going to have some crowd. Thank Christ. Let's clap it up for the crowd. I'm very hyped for that. I can't wait to see the genuine reactions to the show. And but I just want to preface this before we get any further, guys, that night one is significantly less intriguing than night two. I don't know if you guys have looked at the card. I'll break it down a little bit here today. But night two looks way more lit than night one. And that's just, I mean, that's just the bottom line. That's the cat's pajamas and that's the bee's knees. Let's go ahead and shut the hell up and dive into this fantasy booking video. If you guys don't know how the fantasy booking videos work, basically Vince McMahon has put me in charge. He came to me, handed me the keys to the kingdom, and said, MDT, Trey, you are booking this show, and whatever you says go, you have full range, 100% control over everything. The booking decisions, if you want to bring somebody in, I mean, I control everything. I can change the company's name. I, I control the keys to the kingdom here today, and we're going to book WrestleMania 37 from a fantasy standpoint. Now, this isn't my predictions. I don't think these things are going to happen. Some of them, you know, may play in. that may play a role. However, the main... The, the, the main part of the video is the fantasy booking and, you know, just giving you a little bit of creative direction here as we head into this. And I gotta say, this WrestleMania season has been god-awful as far as, like, creative writing. It hasn't gotten me excited at all, unless we're just counting the matches. I'm excited for the matches. But how we got to the matches has been pretty damn lackluster outside of maybe a couple. So let's just shut the hell up and dive into it, guys. Now let's start things off with night number one. And I gotta get this match out of the way before I even talk about anything else. So the first matchup we're going to talk about, guys, is the women's tag team turmoil matchup. So you got all these, uh, is it four teams, five teams? Who the hell cares? Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, Lana and Naomi, Natalia Tamina, the Riot Squad, and Carmella and Billy Kay. And this, like, it just is just rearing its ugly head right in front of us. The whole reason we haven't won in women's tag team championships is on broadcast 4K Ultra Vision on your TV screen right now. This is why we didn't need women's tag team championships. You didn't have enough established tag teams, so now you're throwing these ladies together to makeshift tag teams for your WrestleMania matchup and your card here. And how idiotic is it that they made an NXT brand version as well? Just why? Anyways, a lot of these teams outside the Riot Squad just are completely thrown together. I don't like it whatsoever. It just doesn't mesh well. And the winner of this tag team turmoil match on night number one will go on to fight Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax on night number two. Now, this is the only way I would book this, and I hope to God that WWE does it as well. If it were up to me, Brad, I probably wouldn't do this at all. I would have had one team that won a tournament or won some sort of qualifier to get here at Mania. I wouldn't have done this big old Kaj to squash on night one into night two, but here we go. I would have Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot, the actual team that makes sense. I don't know why they broke up in the first place. They come together. They put their, their differences aside, they get everything going, and they dethrone Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, and they're your new women's tag team champions. Give Liv Morgan and Ruby Wright their spot. They have been put through dog shit for years on the main roster, and it's just ugly to look at, man. Just give these ladies their moment, and let's get them on to the next step of their career, competing and, and developing into things that are way more intriguing, way better television, and just get this out of, off my screen. I had to get that out of the way, but good God in heaven. Alright, so that's my women's tag team championship matches. I knocked that those two out of our 14 matches out of the blue right there. Next up, guys, we have our other tag team matches. Now, I don't have a Damian Priest or a Bad Bunny figure, but if this were me fancy booking it, I probably wouldn't have Bad Bunny on there. I understand the business aspect and everything, but I would have Miz and Morrison go over here. I know it's not going to happen. I know that Priest and Bad Bunny are going to win because, you know, Priest is the upcoming rookie. They pair him with the celebrity. The celebrity and the rookie will get over. I think Priest would work better as a heel. However, that's not what's going here, but if it were up to me, I would definitely book the celebrity to lose. I just don't like the idea of celebrities coming in and knocking off my talent that I have homegrown for years and years, especially in these veterans like Miz and Morrison. But what do I know, Brad? I'm having Miz and Morrison go over, and that's it right there. Again, I know not the most creative stuff going on right now, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Next up, we have our Raw Tag Titles. Now, this one's pretty intriguing. You have the New Day taking on AJ Styles and Omos. And I actually like Omos. I think he's going to be, you know, like, I think he's going to be thrusted up, man. 
man. It seems like they really have some high hopes for him, you know, the next big show, the next giant of the WWE. I hope that he can live up to that and that he can progress and be better and better. So I'm thinking that the New Day are going to drop their Raw tag titles over to AJ Styles and Omos. I think it would make for a cool moment. And if you're not going to give the straps to New Day, another way I fantasy booked it in my brain was you could have the New Day retain and then Omos turn on AJ Styles, thrusting him on a singles run. I don't know how ready he is for that, but how cool would it be to see AJ Styles put over Omos later on down the line in a big money matchup? Maybe that's building to that. Maybe have them win the straps here, hold on to the titles for a while, and then maybe split up later on in the summer. Maybe SummerSlam, you could have AJ Styles versus Omos. I don't know. Just, just, just fantasy booking it here as the video states. But I think that's how I book it. I'd have AJ Styles and Omos get the victory here and become your new Raw Tag Team Champions. Now on the SmackDown side of things, there's no matchup listed just yet, so I don't really know what to say about that. I know it's Ziggler and Rude, but I don't know who they're facing, but I just, I, I, don't, I don't even know what the, what the deal is there. I guess we're going to get a matchup in stone on Friday Night SmackDown, and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but who, who gives a damn? It doesn't really matter that much. I don't think there'd be that much creative going into it, so there you go. Now, sticking with the night one thing, guys, I'm going to get into our next matchup, the steel cage match between Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman. Now, this is a matchup that I think is going to be really entertaining, but I don't give a damn about the outcome, so that's pretty frustrating, but I think it's simple. I would have these guys in a car crash effort. You guys know the Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman, they love to destroy things and do crazy, crazy spots and stuff. This actually is going to be a really fun matchup, I think. I think it's going to be a very intriguing one. I'm going to go with Braun Strowman getting the win over Shane McMahon. There's no reason for Shane McMahon to beat Braun Strowman. I know he's the best wrestler in the world. I know that he's just God's greatest thing since sliced bread, but Braun Strowman really desperately needs this victory here. A lot of people don't even believe in the man anymore. Very, very sad situation. I put him on the right track here by beating Shane McMahon. Have him win in dominance. I'd throw... I'd, you gotta make this man look strong, but I, I guarantee we get a crazy one. I'm gonna go Braun Strowman defeating Shane McMahon again. No reason to have... Uh, I, I, no reason for Shane to beat Braun here. Next up, guys, we got Seth Drippin' Rollins taking on Cesaro. Another matchup here that I am very much looking forward to. Probably one of the matches that I'm most looking forward to on night one. It actually, outside of maybe Sasha and Bianca, this is probably the matchup that I'm most looking forward to out of night one. But Rollins and Cesaro should have a damn banger. I mean, I hope they give these guys time. I would give these guys time. I'm giving these guys time on this night, and I'm letting them do whatever the hell they want, man. I'd throw all the ish at the wall, let these guys tear the damn house down, burn the damn house down. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I gotta go with Seth Drip and Rollins. You know, I feel like this Messiah character is so great, but I feel like uh, he's just kind of dwindled, if that makes sense. Like, he hasn't done much as the Messiah. Like, he's been the Messiah. He's been great. I, I need to get him in some more important roles going forward, man. And I think the first step to doing that is have him beating Cesaro right here. I'm gonna go Seth Rollins beating Cesaro, and uh, that's what I got going on here. And for our last two matches of night number one, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. Now, this is a car crash of a matchup. You got two great athletes right here. I wouldn't have this match go any longer than 10 minutes. It needs to be a Goldberg and Brock Lesnar situation where both of them are just power moving and beating the absolute hell out of each other. Very physical matchup right here. At the end of the day, ah, man, it really hurts me because I don't know why they really, like, I don't know how we got here. You know, it's very weird how Drew McIntyre was champ and then you had the Miz cash in for nothing and then now he's in a damn bunny suit running around and he's not even near the WWE title and you had Bobby Lashley come out of nowhere with the Hurt Business. I think the only thing you could really do here is have Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin cost Bobby Lashley, but what would be the point of that? You know, I, I can't think of anything creative that would really make sense with that because where do you go then? You're just Bobby Lashley and MVP versus Cedric and Shelton? I don't know. There's not a lot of stuff going on right there. I think you'd have a bigger story maybe if they kicked one member out of the Hurt Business, not all of them, and not just MVP and Bobby Lashley here. I'm just going to keep the run going, man. I'm going to go Bobby Lashley to retain over Drew McIntyre as much as it pains me to say. I just feel like this Hurt Business thing is still going, and I think it needs to keep... You know, we've already dethroned Drew at this point. You know, I, I wouldn't like the, the hot potato flip between the title. I'm going to go Bobby Lashley over Drew McIntyre, make Bobby look good, give him this moment, keep him here in the spotlight, and uh, let's just see where we go from here. And our last matchup of night one, guys, and a matchup that I'd probably have main event night one, simply because I actually I'm looking forward to it more than Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre, I think, just a little bit. Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair probably going to be the best women's. This or the Raw Women's Championship match, of course, will be the best women's matches on the card. And 
both of those women's matches I'm actually very much looking forward to just because all four women can go. They're four of my favorite women in the entire world on the planet as far as wrestling is concerned. But Sasha and Bianca, we're giving Bianca Belair her moment, man. There's no doubts about it. I have these ladies tear the damn house down and at the end of the day, Bianca Belair is going to destroy Sasha Banks and, uh, or not destroy, you know what I mean. She's going to win the championship, man. I mean, what do you want? Bianca Belair's your champion. That's just the end of the deal, man. Get out of my face. She's been, and she's been booked excellent. I don't like the way we got here, but we can save it with a damn classic WrestleMania moment and match and Bianca Belair dethroning Sasha and uh, thrusting her into that main event star that we know she is. Alright guys, now we're diving into night number two. We already covered the women's tag team title matchup, but I know we're going to be here a minute, but I hope you guys buckled the hell up. Let's get into these mid-card championships. Apollo Crews, Big If E. I know we're having, what, a Nigerian drum match or something is what they're calling this thing? Nigerian drum fight for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, since we have this new character in Apollo, I feel like we gotta keep him looking good, man. We gotta keep him looking good right here, and I kinda like this run that Apollo's on right now, so I'm gonna put the Intercontinental Championship over on Apollo, let him establish that dominance. This will make this man not only a U.S. champion, but an Intercontinental Champion, which is really impressive right there. And I like that they're giving Apollo, you know, I remember when a lot of people used to be like, you know, Apollo slept on. Well, Apollo's actually, you know, people have opened their eyes a little bit, Brad, because he's actually getting some acknowledgement. He's actually in a big, uh, little, you know, I say big mid-card championship match, but this is WrestleMania, bro. This is a big spot. I mean, Chris Jericho and Kurt Angle and legendary names have been in this exact spot at WrestleMania. So, Apollo Crews is going to win that Intercontinental Championship, and I'm just sorry about that, Big E. I like this heel character. I think he can really push it up if he gets the Intercontinental title, and that would be really dope. Another thing to add is there's probably going to be matches that get added to this thing, but you know, it is what it is. I don't know what to say. Getting into our other mid-card matchup, guys, we have Matt Riddle taking on Sheamus. Now, this matchup right here is going to be so physical that you're going to have to call your mom because you're going to feel like you got assaulted in this matchup. That's how physical this one's going to be. Matt Riddle and Sheamus going head-to-head -head at WrestleMania, man. Give these men 15 to 20 minutes to just beat the dog sh out of each other, man. Just straight up. Don't let them do anything else. Just beat the hell out of each other. But, you know, Sheamus has had his moments, right? Sheamus has had a great career, championship after championship. It's time to put the little man over right here. He's not even little, but you get it. He's Riddle. <laughs> Matt Riddle's getting the win, man. He's getting the win over Sheamus. This would be a good marquee win for Matt Riddle here at WrestleMania over a big name like Sheamus. All the, th all the accomplishments and the accolades that Sheamus has, this would really put Matt Riddle over big, so I would have him win the championship and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just a great physical matchup that Matt Riddle overcomes and adds another notch on the belt there of his U.S. title reign. Alright, guys, getting into one of the matchups that I'm the most looking forward to. Again, dude, look at night two. Night two is absolutely stacked compared to night one. I mean, can we can we go through it right quick? Night two has Roman Edge and Daniel Bryan, Asuka and Rhea Ripley, Fiend and Orton, Big E and Cruz, KO and Zayn, Riddle and Sheamus, and then Nia and Shayna versus the winners of that turmoil match. And then you have Sasha and Bianca, Lashley and Drew, Priest and Bunny, New Day versus Styles, Braun and Shane, Cesaro and Rollins, and then that tag team turmoil match. I don't know about you guys, but night two is absolutely stacked. I mean, it's better. Next up, we got Logan Paul along with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens in the good deal here, man. Again, just a, what a banger, man. What a banger. This is a banger, man. This match is going to rule ass. My boy KO going against Sami Zayn. You guys know the history, the rivalry, the intenseness. I think Logan Paul will get involved. I don't know how much he's going to play a role. I hope he gets stunned or super kicked or something by Kevin Owens or Frog Splash. I have a feeling he will get involved and he could potentially even play a huge role, man. Do you know how much of like, I've grown to like Logan Paul a whole lot more than I used to. I used to despise the man with every ounce of my being. It's since he's grown on me a ton, but to see him beat Kevin Owens or do something to Kevin Owens to make him lose would absolutely wreck my soul. So I couldn't have that, man. If I'm booking this, Kevin Owens getting the win, and he's giving a stunner to Logan Paul, a package pile driver, through some tables, something. We gotta have something, but KO will defeat Sami Zayn here, and yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. This is just gonna be a classic slobber knocker rivalry match between KO and Sami. Next up, guys, we have the Raw Women's Championship match. You got Asuka, and you got Rhea. You have the opposite side. I feel like this is kind of what I would have in my mind, man. This is our WrestleMania 21, but for the ladies, man. On the Raw side of things, we're gonna have Rhea Ripley dethroning Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship, and on the SmackDown side of things, we're gonna have Bianca Belair dethroning Sasha Banks, thrusting up our John Cena and our Batista of the women's divisions, and nowadays, in Bianca, in Rhea Ripley, I think that's the way I would book it. You both have your crowning moments here at WrestleMania 37. We will look back 
back on this and say, man, that is where Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley really took their first steps here into main event status, and I think that's what we got right here, man. Rhea Ripley will defeat Asuka, at least that's how I see it here. I love Asuka, but I think, I also love Rhea Ripley, but I think, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going, man. Crowning moments for both ladies, and Rhea Ripley will become your new women's champion. All right, guys, going into our final two matchups, you've got the Randall Keith Orton taking on The Fiend, and you know Alexa Bliss is in the in, is in the works right here. All right, I don't know why the damn exposure is so high, but let's just get through it here. So you guys know all the crazy stuff that's going on. We've had The Fiend burned alive. He's come back. He looks like damn Part 7 Jason out there. He looks like a zombie. It's absolutely just ludicrous what we got going on in this feud. But a lot of people have been speculating that The Fiend is not what it seems. It is not the actual Fiend. It is not Bray Wyatt. They've been showing a lot of images off that, you know, it looks like a smaller guy. It doesn't look like Bray Wyatt. And I have to agree, man, it kind of doesn't look like Bray Wyatt. Is there a doppelganger? Is there somebody else under the mask of Bray Wyatt? I don't know how that would really play a part in this, you know? I don't know how that would really make any sense. Now, I really wish that Randy Orton had somebody that could be in his corner here, you know, to kind of level the odds out. I mean, I, there's just not a lot that makes a lot of sense. Now, I'm all for fantasy booking here, man, but I can't just pull a rabbit out of the ass and be like, here it is, and just expect it to be good, you know? You can't just, you know what I mean? There has to be some sort of element that would make some sense here, and Bo Dallas being the dead fiend, just, I don't know how that would make that work, you know? As cool as it would be and as swervy as it would be, I just don't see how that would make a lot of sense. I don't see Randy Orton's wife getting involved and helping, you know, with the Alexa Bliss thing and everything like that, so you can't have the dead fiend be dead on arrival, you know what I'm saying? So I think the dead fiend has to beat Randy Orton, and I really, I, again, they booked themselves into a corner, just like they did with the regular Fiend, and now he's back, he's been burned alive, it's like you're, you literally are in the same exact spot that you were in, because you're dealing with a zombie, so it's like, how do you even book this guy? It's not like The Undertaker, it's completely different, really, because he's like Michael Myers, it's like you can't kill him, so I don't, I don't know what the hell's going on, man, but I would have The Fiend beat Randy Orton, and I mean, that's, that's just, that's just it, man, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. And finally, Trip Triple threat match, right? Now, coming into this, I thought we were going to have Spear versus Spear, the ultimate heel, the best heel of the year in Roman Reigns, going against the best babyface of the year in Edge when he returned, and he made all this noise, and it was like, holy ish, look at this. And I thought we were just going to be a collision course, Edge versus Roman Reigns, this is how we do it, but it's clear to me what WWE's kind of planning here. They added Daniel Bryan to the, to the matchup here, simply to take the pin, right? I mean, that's clearly what they're doing. And I get it. It makes sense. You're keeping Roman Reigns from taking the pin, but damn, Roman Reigns has been on an absolute tear, but you don't want Edge coming back for nothing, right? He never lost the title. Well, Brad. All right, Brad, here we go. At the end of the matchup, Daniel Bryan is going to play the exact role that he's supposed to play, Brad. He's going to eat the pin. Roman Reigns will not get pinned here, but Edge is going to win the Universal Championship, all right? He's going to win the championship. He's going to ride off into the sunset, right? Edge is going to have the title, blah, blah, blah. He's going to come out. I mean, he might do it on Raw. Wouldn't really make a lot of sense, though, would it? He'd have to wait till Friday Night Smackdown. He comes out. He's got his new blue championship, and he's like, you know what, Brad? This is all great and dandy. This belt sucks. This belt's cursed. This belt looks like every other John Brown belt. And he's going to wheel it out, man. He's going to have his little case sitting there, and he's going to pull it out, and he's going to claim the Big Gold World Championship, and he will bring back the Big Gold Championship that he never lost. And he will put that blue belt in the garbage, and uh, he'll bring back the Big Gold Championship. And we'll get one last reign out of Edge. And then uh, this will be the... I mean, they can keep the same title design if you want. You can keep the exact same one. It could be a little modern, maybe with a modern WWE logo at the top. That would be pretty damn badass, I think. But can you imagine Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns or The Fiend or just any of these new superstars carrying around the big gold? I mean, can you imagine that ish? It shit would be mind-blowing. So I'm going to go Edge winning the Universal title. 
and bring him back the big gold. And there you go. Roman Reigns would eventually win it back and look beautiful with the big gold strap. Yeah, that, that's fantasy booking WrestleMania 37. I know it was a lot. I didn't really plan on going through every single matchup, but here we are, Brad. Before we get out of here, guys, let's get into our random shout out. And this random shout out is going to go to Myth G Gamer, who says, MDT does a surgery episode in front of the GM's office. Eric Bischoff, you crossed the line. That was pretty good and creative because you guys can see behind Edge's shoulder, that is the MDT general manager's office playing into the pick fed and all the stuff. And it's like, you know, Eric Bischoff is in there and he's like, my God, Brad, how you filming surgeries? outside of the damn office making a ton of racket. So there you go. Huge shout out to you, man. I really appreciate you leaving that comment. That got me, it got me to chuckle a little bit there. But I hope you guys enjoyed the fantasy booking video. I know it was a long one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it anyways. I would love to know what you guys think of my stuff down in the comment section below. I would love to hear some of your own fantasy booking ideas as well down in the comment section. That would be really cool. But thank you guys so very much for watching. Subscribe to the... I almost kicked the damn camera on the floor. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like I did when I film the surgery outside the GM's office. You cross the line, I've been beat.